In this video, let's try to set up Docker. Now in this machine, I don't have Docker. Now how do I verify that? So what you do is you use your command line. So basically you can also check from program files, but let's use the command lines because that's what we are going to use continuously. So to check, you can simply enter this command called Docker and then version. The, the, the moment you do this, when you say enter, it will give you an error by saying Docker is not recognized as internal or external command. So that means Docker is not there. So what we have to do is we have to install Docker. The way you can do that is very simple. Download the Docker and install it. I mean, of course, that's the obvious part, right? But how will you get it? It's so simple. You can just go to Google and search for Docker download. It will take you to the official website. In fact, you can just click on the first link. And from here, you can install Docker. Now, if you can see, there's a word which is Docker desktop. Now what exactly Docker desktop is? The thing is, we when you talk about Docker, it started with Docker on Linux, right? So we have talked about the Linux containers, right? So basically we had Linux containers and somewhere Docker, the idea of Docker started with that. So initially Docker used to run on Linux, but then we thought, hey, you know, we have multiple OS, not, not me, but then the Docker team. They thought we have multiple OS, right? We got Windows, Mac. So how do I do that on this machine? So before, what they used to do is they used to install Linux on Windows because there was a support of Linux on Windows, which is WSL, and then you can install in uh, in Windows. So we have a layer in between for Linux, and it works on Mac as well now. And to support uh, Docker on this stored OS, we got Docker Desktop. So the way you can get that is very simple. When you go to this website, you can see we have multiple options here. So if I go here, we have an option of uh, Windows. So this is a Windows machine, I can use this or you can use it for Mac for Intel chip or Apple chip, depending upon which uh, laptop you have or which machine you have. Otherwise you can go for Linux. Let me show you how it looks for Linux. For Linux, you have to enter command and people who use Linux, they know how to run commands, right? So you can just follow these steps and you should be able to install Linux. It's very easy. So just follow the steps. Now, since we are not into Linux, we are using this on Windows and same steps applies for Mac as well. You can see we have an option of download here. So if I click on this, now this is not the first time I'm installing Docker on this machine, so I should have this setup already. So you can see uh, I already have a Docker setup, so I will just cancel this. In fact, I downloaded it in the morning itself. Uh, so what I will do is I will just open this. So this is how this setup looks like. So when I double click this, the steps are straightforward. Okay, so it will say, do you want to install Docker? I would say, of course, that's what I'm doing. Uh, click on yes, and it should take some time to download because it's a heavy software. Now, depend upon how much how much RAM you have in your machine, because at this point, if I open Task Manager, uh, you can see it is consuming already 73% because of the recording software which I'm using. But if I go back here, okay, yeah. So you can see it is installing, but after installing, it will take a lot of memory because Docker is a heavy software. Plus the moment you start running your containers, it will consume a lot of memory. But what if you don't want to install on your machine? You can still do that, okay? So if you don't want to run it on your machine, there is something called Labs, Docker Labs. Uh, do I have the option on this? Let me check. So they used to have this on the page itself, but now I don't see that in the page. So what we can also do is search for Docker Labs, and you can see the first option is that. So it says play with Docker, I will just click on this. So if you don't want to install, you can directly access Docker from here. Uh, you can log in, already have an account on Docker. Let me use it. Okay, so I had, I had account on Docker, you can simply create the account that's free. And you can click on start and from this you can do whatever you want to do. So everything which we are doing, I mean, most of it which we are doing on the local machine can run on the labs as well. The only thing is I'm not using labs for this recording is because one session can only be for four hours. And of course I will not be making the entire course in one go. Again, I have to do the same steps again and again for different videos. But if you want to try, you can try it out. So example, one of the command for Docker is, I want to check how many Docker images I have already. So when I do that, it says empty. So yes, you can do the same thing which you are doing on the local machine. But let's focus on the local part. So you can see it says Docker is installed properly. I will click on close and I will open Docker now. So I will say Docker 
And you can see we got Docker desktop and look at the memory consumption. The only thing I'm scared about using Docker on the local machine is because of the amount of memory it takes. So I feel 16 GB RAM is minimum for Windows if you want to run Docker. So except, I mean, of course it will work on 8 GB as well, but it will lag somewhere. Okay, so you can see uh, we got Docker desktop. I would encourage you to log in so that you will have the same setting on different machines if you are using. At this point, I will simply say continue without signing in and it is asking for roles. I will skip this. And yes, we got our Docker up and running. So there's something called Docker engine. We'll talk about Docker engine later. Uh, but these are the options. Remember in the theory, we talked about Docker images, Docker containers. So at this point, you will see all the containers here. Uh, images, you will see all the downloaded images you have volumes for the storage. If I go back to the images, you can see, I can search for a particular image online. So let's search su search an image. What I will do is I will down, I will search for Linux and you can see we have an option of Alpine. I will get Ubuntu. So I will click on pull and now it will download this image. So we can also use this uh, command here, which is Docker pull. And you can see it says download the new image and now I can just run this. So run and it should be running in the container. So if I go back to container, you can see it is running now. And the image, we already have an image now. So basically that's how you can get the image and make it run. So when you say image, you can see it's, it's very lightweight. It's only 70 to 77 MB. But if I say container, it will consume a lot of memory. Okay, so it's not running. So we'll see how to run a container later, but you, you can see we got we got the Docker setup done and we also able to got the get the image. Okay, so that's how basically you do the setup for the Windows. The setup is same for the Mac as well and you can simply do the same step. And now if I go back to my command line, let's hit the same one, it is not working. So let's open our CMD once again. So sometimes you have to, most of the time you have to restart your CMD if you install something new. So if I say Docker version, you can see it says Docker version 24.0.4 or six. So we got our Docker installed on the machine. So that's it from this video where we were able to get the Docker on the machine. And in the upcoming videos, we'll see how do you use Docker to get the images, run the containers and many more.